hey, I'm trying out a uh, board back here. I don't know if I'll even um, use it. But um, let's see how this goes. We are on Brutus. This is on page 20 of your appendix. Blue box. Okay, it's got me. Okay, so uh, right here. You see it? And then over here, I have the questions that you're supposed to go along with. So this is page 20. And this will put us right here. I just want to point out one thing. Uh, New York, uh, write down... Uh, can I write down stuff? Is that going to let me do that? Right here? Hmm? Huh? Uh -huh. mm, nope. What is going on? Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. But that gets all up in our stuff. Never mind. Mm, mm. Okay. So New York is where the uh, the uh, debate took place. Okay. Uh, so write this down. Add note to text. I'd love to. It just takes a little while. And it does that. Okay. So look. This is the note that you write to text, okay? Uh, nine of 13 had already ratified, but New York was too important to not have their vote, okay? All right, hey, uh, he can do it. Mm -hmm. Getting glued. Top to my things getting glued right here. Oh, sorry. This, this little box right here from India. No big deal. <laughs> India. Okay, so uh, that's uh, New York was too important to not have their vote. If it post, will it like? That's too much. It's too big. Okay, uh, and then this is saying like, uh, kind of like the Declaration. Like we owe it to you to. I don't know, introduction, whatever. Okay, so perhaps this country never saw so critical a period in their political concerns. We have felt the feebleness of the ties by which these United States are held together. Okay, so here Brutus, the Anti-Federalist, is acknowledging that uh, the articles are weak. All right, so the Anti-Federalist, let's go to the board here. Anti-Federalist, they acknowledge arts are we, they don't, there you go. They don't deny that, but they're gonna say something totally, and, and they want sufficient energy in our represent, present confederation to manage, in some instances, our general concerns. Read here our national concerns, all right? And, um, you know, you should be taking notes on this, like drawing a line out from, but I, I don't wanna stop it and do this thing every time I want you to like note something, okay? Like that, that means national, all right? So but various expedients, solutions have been proposed to remedy these evils. What evils? What evils? That the, the articles are too weak uh, for setting up a national government that can solve problems of general concerns, okay? Uh, at length, the convention. This is the convention of 1787. Okay, I'll just highlight what, where I want writing done. There you go. Okay, so convention, that's uh, 1787, 55 delegates. At a convention of the states has been assembled. They have formed a constitution which will now probably be submitted to the people to ratify or reject. Remember, ratification is going to require nine of 13 states. Okay. That's nice. Um, who are the fountain of all power? The people are the fountain of all power. And what principle is this? Do you remember what principle this was? Popular sovereignty. I'm so good when I spell the word sovereignty right. No, nailed it. Come on, man. Move out the way. Okay, so uh, fountain, people are the fountain of all power. That means that people are ultimately in charge, popular sovereignty. To whom alone it, it of right belongs to make or unmake constitutions. Right there. Popular sovereignty means people, the foundation rests on the people. Or forms the government at their pleasure. The most important question that was ever proposed to your decision 
or to the decision of any people under heaven is before you. And you are to decide upon it by men of your own election chosen specifically for this purpose. Okay, men by your own. Okay, what we're talking about here are uh, we're talking about state conventions. Where can I? Show comment out. Is that what's that? I just screwed up, and it's got me stuck now. Uh, it's opening something. Oh, it's opening an app or something. Wait, what's that? Whatever. Oh, that's what that is. Okay, so men of general election, state conventions, state conventions, right? That there. If the Constitution offered to your acceptance be a wise one, calculated to preserve the invaluable lessons of liberty, to secure the inestimable rights, or are we 14? What problems is Brutus referencing? The weaknesses that con constitute the co Articles of Confederation. All right, let's skip now. Um, what are we, 2039? Momentous then is the question, uh, momentous then is the question you have to determine. And you are called upon by every motive which should influence a noble and virtuous mind to examine it well and to make up a wise judgment. It is insisted, indeed, that this constitution, this constitution, must be received, be it ever so imperfect. If it has defects, it is said, they can be best amended when they are experienced. But remember, the people once part with power, they can seldom or never resume it again. Okay. Uh, you need to note right here, what is it, 21 through 3, right here, that, that this corresponds to this one. And what Brutus is, is referencing here is the Federalists are saying, we gotta, we gotta hurry up. All right. Uh, I mean, and Anti-Federalists want to wait. Okay. So, uh, wait, don't rush the Constitution. But the Federalists are all acting like it's a big emergency trying to rush a thing through. And Brutus here is saying, uh, don't be so quick to part with your power, people, because once you part with it, once you part with it, um, it, it ain't going to come back. All right. So wait, don't rush. That's an anti-Fed argument. Okay. Uh, and with these few introductory remarks, I shall proceed to a consideration of this Constitution. So now he's going to start critiquing criticizing the constitution um and so and then we will be on this question right here so we're at, at 10 what are the two choices brutus describes brutus remember he's an anti-federalist we got that right all right uh let me get myself back on here this okay so the first question that presents itself on the subject is whether a confederated government be the best for the united states or not okay so this is confusing and note it right now. Confederated in this case means strong central government. It's really confusing. Um, it means strong central government. Or in other words, whether the 13 nines should be reduced to one great republic, governed by one legislature and under the direction of one executive and judicial, or whether they should continue 13 confederated republics. See, he, he uses it twice in different ways. Confederated republics under the direction and control of the Supreme Federal Head for certain defined national purposes only. Okay, this right here, 13, this is what anti-federalists want right here. Okay, so you can underline that and write down, that's what they want right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one of the choices is this, and the other choice is a strong central government with weak states. Federation versus federation, right there, right? Okay. Feel free to pause it. I ain't slowing down. This inquiry is important. This question, this consideration is important because although the government reported by the convention does not go to a perfect entire consolidation, yet it approaches so near to it that it must, if it executed, certainly and infallibly terminate in it. What he's saying is, the, the choice of a strong central government will result in the entire consolidation. We talked about media consolidation. Remember when all these different things become one thing? Well, uh, he's saying you go down this road, it's going to end with basically a unitary government. And try to use that word here, that uh, the 
the constitution will end in a unitary government. That's a government with a strong central government, only a central government, really. Okay. Where did my music go? Y'all missed the music? Uh, just in case, let's just, you know, why not? Uh, where is my, that's uh, something out there. Let's see. No, 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 you won't ruin it, man. Right here. Sorry. I just want the music back. This was a mistake. Come on, YouTube. School computers. Sorry, guys. That got it. Mm. Never mind. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this government is to possess, the government that's going to end up in a unitary government, this government is to possess absolute and uncontrollable power, legislative, executive, and judicial. All right. And so th we're on this one right here, by the way. All right. 19. Okay. So, um, with respect to every object to which it extends. For by the last clause of section eight, article first, it is declared that the Congress shall have power to make all laws that shall be necessary in preparing and execution of foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this constitution in the government of the United States. And it, so what clause, what part of the constitution is he referencing here? Huh? His first big objection is they hate the elastic clause, which is, you know, the necessary and proper clause. Okay, and it's it's found at the end of section eight of article. Shoot, section eight, article one. That's not how you write that, but there should be article one, section eight. And this is where you find the delegated slash express powers. of Congress right there. Let's, uh, let's blow this out for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The delegated express powers of Congress right here. So real soon, you he announces the problem, wait, don't rush. And then he immediately drops down into, uh, talking about the elastic clause. Okay. That's major. Okay. Um, so, and by y'all, I'm recording here. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, and by the sixth article it is declared that this constitution, the laws of the United States, which shall be made pursuant thereof and the treaties made or which shall be made under the sorry, blah, 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 blah. The supreme law of the land right there. This is really, really important. We didn't go over this in class. I'm so sorry, but now we are supreme law of the land. This is called, and I'm going to erase this. Mm, 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 mm. Here come students gathering around. All right, here they come gathering around. Dag gum it. I just got this board. It is so cheap. A teacher let me borrow it. Mm, it's ridiculous. That's a hole right there. Okay. Are y'all going to listen? Yes. Okay, come on in. Gather around the fire. Okay, so supremacy clause. Supremacy clause. So he hates, remember he hated the, the, the elastic clause and now he's going off on the supremacy clause. Are y'all going to sit down and no, are y'all just hanging? Okay. I've never even seen you before. I mean, people just, you start talking about the constitution and people just flock, flock to you. Okay. So, okay. So the Supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, uh, anything in the constitution or law of any state to the contrary, not the same, like this, because of the supremacy clause, no judges or law is going to be able to stand alone. All right. Like it's going to be superseded, uh, overridden by the national government. It appears from these articles that there's no need of any intervention of the state governments between the Congress and the people. 
So the Congress, the new national government, it's going to go directly to the people now. They're, the states won't be able to stand in between them. The, the national government will be able to execute any one power vested in the general government and the constitution and laws of every state are nullified and declared void. Laws, this is underlined this right here, laws of every state are nullified and declared void by this constitution. Why is that? Remember, he points to the necessary and proper clause and the supremacy clause. Okay, uh, He's saying because of those, states might as, might as well not even make laws. So far as they are, uh, are shall be consistent with this constitution or laws made in pursuance of it or treaties made under the authority of the United States, the government then, so far as it extends, is a complete one and not a confederation. So it's a unitary government, not a confederation. So now he's using the word confederation like we use it. It is as much one complete government as that of New York or Massachusetts. Like he's basically saying the national government the states are more like counties now. That's what he's saying, right? The states are more like counties or cities within underneath, where's my hand using this? Underneath the state government, okay? Uh, and this national government will have absolute and perfect powers to make and execute all laws, to appoint officers, institute courts, declare offenses, and annex penalty with respect to every object, which they'll do everything. So far, therefore, as its powers reach, all ideas of confederation are given up and lost. All ideas that the states have independence, that they have sovereignty is lost, okay? States are over. It is true this government is limited to certain objects. Okay, so what it's saying is it does, he's referring to, and let's, let's write this down, okay? Uh, note, add note to text. What he's saying is uh, the Constitution does delegate slash express, slash list, powers. They say, that doesn't matter. Why? I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> it's not right there. You can list all you want. Those offices, armies, navies, all that. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, let's see here. So there, there, there. Okay. So, uh, to speak more properly, to some degree of power is still left to the states, but a little, but little attention to the powers vested in the general government. So the states do have a little bit of power. How do I do this now? Oh, okay, good. All right, next page. Uh, okay, so it, it, right here, powers are given to the state, but it will soon be annihilated. Any powers that the, the state still have will be taken away eventually. So far as they are barely necessary, the organization of a general government. Okay. And it's pretty soon here's going to get into taxing power and stuff. Now let's see where we're at on, on our question. So we're on page 22, 3 through 24. And I ask what powers of Congress are specially feared. Okay. So um, I guarantee it's going to be right here. Look, taxes, the impost and excises are, are, are kinds of taxes. So the power to lay and collect taxes right here. Um, absolutely. Okay. So, okay. So there's no limitation to this power unless it be said that the clause which directs the use to which those taxes and duties shall be applied may be said to be a limitation, but this is no restriction of the power at all. There's no restriction of the national government's taxing power for by this clause, that's the taxing clause. You can find it in Article 1, Section 8, the taxing clause. Okay. Uh, they are to be applied to pay the debts. Remember, the national government gets debts now. So uh, note that. Pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare, welfare of the United States. He's referencing the preamble here, common defense and general welfare. But the legislature have authority to contract debts, to buy state debts, to take them over at their discretion. Please don't. Let's not even talk about what that word means anymore. We got it. They are the sole judges, the national government, of what is necessary. Remember, he, he look at that. He's using the word necessary. Necessary and proper calls. Saying he should put it in quotes. Uh, judges of what is necessary to provide for the common defense, and they are only to determine what is for the general wel welfare, the national government. This power, therefore, is neither more nor less than a power to lay and collect taxes, impose and excesses at their pleasure. 
not only the power to lay taxes unlimited as the amount they may require. So not only do they have, they can determine the amount, but it's perfect and absolute to raise them in any mode they please. No state legislature or any power in the state governments have any more to do in carrying into this effect. Like states don't have any say in taxing anymore. They can't stop taxes. In the business, therefore, of laying and collecting taxes, the idea of confederation is totally lost, that states have any power whatsoever, that of one entire public is embraced. It is proper here to remark that the authority to lay and collect taxes is the most important of any power that can be granted. Underline and star that stuff right there, okay? And let, let's don't give up on this. It connects with it almost all other powers, at least will in process of time draw other after it. Okay, so let's, this power that he's talking about, we're gonna, we're gonna have a fancy name to it. This power is called the power of the purse. You don't have laws, purse. Okay, power of the purse, meaning hold money. Okay, from, from here on out, instead of referring to po Congress's power to coin money and to collect taxes and do all this money stuff, you can just say power of the purse and you mean all that stuff. All right. So giving Congress, the national Congress power of the purse will be the great engine of oppression and tyranny. This cannot fail of being the case. If we ever consider the contracted limits by which are set by this constitution to the late governments or this article of raising money, like, because they have the absolute power to tax, the states are screwed. No state can emit paper money, lay any duties or impose or on imports or exports. States can't tax this stuff anymore unless Congress approves. And then the net produce will be for the United States. The only mean therefore left for any state to support its government and discharge its debts is by direct taxation. So t states can still tax. States can still tax. And the United States have also power to lay and collect taxes in any way they please. Everyone who has thought on the subject must be convinced that small sums of money can be collected in any country by direct taxes. These are the most unpopular forms of taxes. You can tax tobacco and people can live with it. But when you just say you're going to give me uh, 25 cents of every dollar, that makes people angry. When the federal government begins to exercise the right of taxation in all its parts, the legislatures of the seven several states will find it impossible to raise money to support their governments. If you allow the federal government to tax, then when the states start trying to do it, people are going to be like, wait, we're, we're already being taxed. And state taxes will be very unpopular, especially because they have to be direct taxes. Without money, they cannot be supported and they must do in a little way as they, the states must do in a little way as before observed, their powers absorbed in that of the general government. And that gets us down to this right here. You can summarize that there. And in the next podcast, uh, we'll pick up and we've gotten halfway through this uh, document here. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. Good job. Is that what you want me to say? Scott. All right. Hey, 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 hey. I don't wait. No.